Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Immortals, released in the year 2011. When the world was still young, there was a war in the heavens when the Immortals discovered that they had the power to kill each other. During this war, a great weapon called the Epirus Bow was lost into the human world. The winners of this war became the gods, while the defeated became the Titans, who were now trapped in the mountains of Tartarus. A young virgin oracle jolts up from her sleep. Her companions ask her what vision she saw, and she tells them that she saw King Hyperion release the Titans from their cell. She believes that the king wishes to seek the Epirus Bow to rule mankind. Just then, the huge army of King Hyperion marches to the gates and the king himself barges in. The king demands to see the oracle, but the priest stops him, cautioning him that he will incur the wrath of the gods if he doesn't stop. Hyperion demands the priest to tell him where the gods were when his child and wife were dying and when he prayed every day. He then proceeds to burn the poor man after not receiving a convincing answer. He proclaims that he will end the reign of gods. Somewhere in a Hellenic village, Theseus lives with his mother. One day, the guards of the village sound the bells and everyone gathers at the village center. A commander, Helios, explains that Hyperion has seized the Sibylline Monastery and his army will soon attack the village, so they must all evacuate to Mount Tartarus behind the Great Wall. The villagers quickly start evacuating, but Theseus and other peasants are forced to stay back because of their less noble blood. Because of this, Theseus gets into a fight with one of the soldiers, Lysander. He takes on five soldiers at once and manages to take Lysander hostage. Helios comes to negotiate and promises Theseus that he'll make sure the peasants are taken safely the next day, after which he lets Lysander go. Helios then asks Theseus to join him, but he rejects them, stating that they're not trustworthy and would discard his kind whenever he wanted. Theseus then goes to his teacher, an old man, who tells him that he will not be leaving the village to die a slow death, rather he would wish to die a quick one at the hands of Hyperion's army. He encourages Theseus to take arms against evil. That night, as the old man goes to sleep, he senses a presence and quickly transforms to his true form of the god Zeus. His stalker was his own daughter Athena, who asks him why he spends so much time influencing Theseus. Zeus admits that only Theseus can lead the army of men against the army of Hyperion, but it must be his own choice. After the army had evacuated the high-blooded nobles, they leave behind Lysander with other commanders to protect the peasants. Lysander, however, murders the commanders in cold blood and rushes to King Hyperion to get under his command. Hyperion wants nothing to do with a traitor. He doesn't care about the women, weapons, and information Lysander was offering and only wants to know where the oracle was hidden, for only she knows of the Epirus bow. In the end, however, Hyperion decides to keep Lysander under one condition. He orders his soldiers to rid him of his manhood, for the world doesn't need any more cowards like him to be born. The next day, as Theseus goes to the hills to practice his spear, he notices that his village is burning. He rushes to the scene to find that Hyperion's army has attacked and is murdering the people of his village, who had been forced to stay behind. He also sees two soldiers about to kill his mother. Theseus roars in anger and murders several men in hopes to rescue her, but he's eventually pinned down by several men. Then King Hyperion takes a dagger and slits his mother's throat right before his eyes. He then commands his men to take Theseus to the salt mines as a slave. From the mountain Olympus, the gods watch as Hyperion's legion destroys every monastery in search for the bow. Zeus, however, reminds the other gods of the rule that they cannot interfere unless the titans are released, and warns them that if they aid or interfere with men, they will be punished with death. One day, the four oracles are captured and brought to the same prison where Theseus is kept. The virgin oracle accidentally touches his legs and sees a vision of him standing together with Hyperion upon the ruins of Greece. She then quickly goes to the other prisoners and tells them that tonight they must escape. At night, as the four oracles are performing their ritual, they're interrupted by the guards, and during that moment, they manage to kill them. Three of the oracles remain behind to protect the virgin oracle from any pursuers. The virgin oracle Phaedra also frees Theseus, along with other prisoners, and they all escape the prison. The next morning, Stavros, one of the escaped prisoners, spots a merchant ship, and so they all plan to steal it and head north to defeat Hyperion once and for all. However, once they reach to ambush the ship, they realize that it's filled with Hyperion's soldiers. A battle ensues in which they are truly outnumbered. 
Despite Zeus ordering them not to interfere, Poseidon jumps from Mount Olympus into the sea to create such a tide that destroys anything in its path. The soldiers are blown away along with the ship, while Theseus and his group are saved thanks to the oracle's visions. Later, Theseus asks Phaedra what else she has seen in her visions, and she tells him that he will embrace Hyperion. She also tells him that she saw a body. Theseus tells her that her mother had passed recently. Phaedra tells him that they must give her a proper burial, for her faith demands it, and so the group heads back to Theseus' village. On the other hand, Hyperion also commands the Minotaur to go after the Virgin Oracle, and he orders his other soldiers to ambush anyone in the village. After burying his mother in the temple, Theseus says his final goodbye to the village and destroys the temple. When he strikes the temple's mound with his hammer, he suddenly finds the Epirus bow. Just then, he is attacked by the Minotaur. Outside, his friends are also surrounded by the ambush party. Theseus fights bravely with the Minotaur, and despite being injured in the arm, he manages to beat the bull and chop his head off. Theseus then goes outside and uses the Epirus bow to kill the soldiers surrounding his friends. After securing their safety, Theseus blacks out. The next morning, he wakes up to Phaedra nursing his wounds. She tells him that he had been poisoned but is now out of danger. The both of them have fallen in love with each other, and so they sleep together. In doing so, Phaedra relinquishes her position as the Virgin Oracle and loses her power of vision. Later that day, Theseus, along with Phaedra, Stavros, and the monk, head to where Hyperion is camped in order to finish him off and end his suffering. However, they find no one there. In the center, Phaedra sees a bull idol, inside which her oracle sisters were trapped and burned. She weeps for their suffering. The monk gets enraged and heads marching onto the halls without realizing it's a trap. Theseus and Stavros try stopping him, but it's too late, as they're soon surrounded by the heathen men. Theseus also loses the bow to a dog. Ares, the god of war, appears and destroys the entire enemy battalion surrounding them. Athena also appears and provides the men with two horses and urges them to rush to Tartarus to stop Hyperion. Much to their dismay, Zeus barges in from the skies. He is very displeased with his children. Athena quickly apologizes, but Ares tries to argue, which makes him so angry that he whips him to his death. Zeus then turns to Theseus and warns him that no god will ever help him again and that he is on his own. Hyperion and his men have already marched to the Great Wall of Tartarus. Hyperion asks Lysander about the place, the defenses, and the number of soldiers it holds, after which he simply dismisses him. The dog from earlier approaches Hyperion and hands him the Epirus bow. The soldier accompanying the dog relays to Hyperion how the gods appeared from above and slaughtered the men. He warns the king that this news would bring panic among men. Hyperion, now mad with power and hunger, simply kills the man so that the news may not spread. After hearing how the god saved Theseus, Hyperion gets all the information he can on the boy with the help of Lysander. He finds out that Theseus is a bastard, born after his mother was raped by some villagers. This piques his interest. On the other side, upon reaching the Great Wall, Theseus quickly meets with Helios. He is then taken to the head of the council. Theseus tells him that the Epirus bow is now in the possession of Hyperion, and that they must seal the gates and prepare for war. The council leader doesn't believe him, nor does he believe that the gods exist, so he simply refuses. Suddenly, they're notified that an envoy has been sent by King Hyperion to discuss the terms of peace. The envoy from King Hyperion strangely requests for Theseus to talk with. As Theseus and the envoy converse, the envoy reveals himself as King Hyperion and asks Theseus to join him. He is certain that the war will go in his favor and promises to provide Theseus with immortality. Theseus rejects it, saying deeds are immortal, not flesh, and returns inside the wall. It is pretty clear that the war is now upon them. The next day, all the soldiers prepare their weapons, shields, and armor for an imminent war. Outside the gates of the Great Wall, thousands of Hyperion soldiers are ready as well. Hyperion marches to the front of his army and fires his bow. With a single arrow, he's able to bring down the huge gates of the Great Wall. Suddenly, the Hellenic men are in all sorts of chaos as they run beyond the wall. They are scared, and some even throw away their arms in hopes of surrendering. Amidst the chaos, Theseus rises to the wall and calms the disrupted soldiers. He delivers a speech to calm their nerves and tells them that surrendering now would mean surrendering not only their lives but also their souls. 
He then leads the army against the massive army that approaches them. A huge battle ensues, where many men die. The Hellenics stand their ground and fight bravely against the heathen army. During the battle, King Hyperion proudly marches through the gates and heads to the top of the Great Wall. There, he's greeted by the leader of the Hellenic Council, who still hopes for a negotiation, but Hyperion simply walks and splits his head from his body, killing him. Hyperion then takes aim of his bow at the mountain before him and strikes it. Theseus hears this noise from below and rushes along with Stavros to stop the Mad King. When they reach there, they are too late, as Hyperion aims his bow at the cage containing the Titans and strikes before they can kill him. Theseus wakes up after the explosion to see that his friend Stavros is heavily injured. The Titans have been released and are battling against him. He uses the bow to hit one of them, but the rest of the Titans simply kill him in an instant. Just then, the gods appear from the sky. Zeus, with the strike of his hammer, takes away the bow from the Titans' grasp, and a battle soon begins between the gods and Titans. Outside, Theseus is met with Hyperion, and they too, much like the gods and Titans, start battling to the death. The Titans manage to kill Apollo and Hercules. Poseidon fights bravely and kills many of them, but he too soon falls at the hands of the Titans. Zeus watches his daughter Athena getting impaled by the Titans, and in a fit of rage grabs the chains that hold Tartarus and pulls it together, hoping to collapse the mountain itself and contain the Titans within it. After much difficulty and a hard battle, Theseus manages to defeat Hyperion as well. Just as he does so, the mountain Tartarus collapses upon them all. Some time later, it is known that Theseus earned a place amongst the gods for his bravery beyond any other man. He was also rewarded with a son, Acamas. A huge monument to honor Theseus had been made in the village center. Acamas watches his father's monument in awe. Suddenly, he's greeted by an old man, the same man who once taught Theseus. He tells Akamas that the war in heaven is coming and his father will be there. Akamas then looks to the sky and he can see thousands of men battling. The war in the heavens has begun. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, Take care.